HealthCast number 559, Why Are You Getting Belly Fat? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about one of my most unfavorite problems, but one of my favorite explanations that I always have asked and answered to my patients when they come in for the first time. My patients typically say, give me their symptoms. They talk to me and then they go, but I've got this big belly fat right here. And then they pick up a piece of skin and a subcutaneous fat and show me, <laughs> which is true. I mean, it's obvious after they show me, because I can't usually see across my desk or my table, um, how much belly fat they have, but that proves it. And then we go through all of the reasons they have belly fat, all the reasons that they specifically have certain problems that cause it to be more prevalent, but also all the ways that you can go about treating it, fixing it, removing it, basically. Now, we all know that there's um, plastic surgical ways to remove fat, basically cut it out or suck it out. That's not what I'm going to talk about today because that's not available to most of us. And I am going to talk about doing it without surgery or without lasers or even though we have Juva Shape that does do that type of thing. That's really for sculpting. I really want to talk about just getting rid of the fat. So uh, the real question is, why does everybody get belly fat? So most of the time when you see people over 40 or 50 and you haven't seen them in a long time, they look different. Their whole shape is different. I call it their body composition is different. And generally, their waistline has disappeared, both men and women. And this is process of aging that even when we look at people, if we see belly fat, I don't care how old they are, we go, oh, they're old. Because that is one of the things that we think about and associate with not being fertile anymore or not being young anymore. So um, no one generally escapes it except for the anorexic who doesn't eat anything, and that's not healthy either. So um, what belly fat and, bow and distension, because you can have belly, let, let's divide those two up. Belly fat is either the fat under the skin that you can pick up. So that's right under the skin, and below it are your muscles and your fascia and your peritoneum and then your intestines. So there's a lot of things between the fat and the inside of your abdomen. So belly fat can be that. We call that subcutaneous fat. They're treated different ways. And then you can have omental fat, which is inside your abdomen. The cavity of your abdomen has all your intestines. And in front of those intestines is something called the omentum. It's yellow. It's I consider it gross. It's greasy. And it holds all of the fat that you store for protecting your intestines, basically if you get hit in the stomach, or it also is something that protects you when you're sick. It, it saves calories there so that if you get ill, then you have some energy to use to, to give you a chance to get better. That's the good part of omino fat. The bad part is we don't just have a little omino fat. We have a bit, you know, the bigger your belly is, and if you can't pick up the skin, it's all inside, and it is thick. It's a big, thick, yellow, gross omentum. And that fat is harder to lose than the fat that is under the skin. So that's omental fat. So we'll be talking about that um, as we go along today. So when I was in medical school 40 years ago, I'm not sure they even in medical school everybody has their own cadaver or not, but we had our own cadaver, slid under our desk, Form, had formalin, um, so it was soaked in formaldehyde. So the whole place smelled. 
And <laughs> we had, to, when we opened the abdomen and saw all this yellow, slick, gross fat, basically I stopped eating. I think I went down to 107 pounds. <laughs> and, and besides the fact that I smelled like formaldehyde for three months. So it is not pretty, whether it's out, whether you're looking at the outside of someone or the insides of someone. So um, I, was, I was bound and determined to not get that, but I have to admit that as we get past 40, I had to battle it some and do some different things. And, and besides diet and exercise, which we're gonna talk about next week, which exercises and which types of diets work best for belly fat, but this week we're going to talk about basically why we have it first. And, and basically that's because we're overweight. Just in general, we're overweight and we store it uh, in our bellies after we're 40 or 50. That happens partially because our testosterone drops. And that's why I treat it with testosterone initially. When our testosterone drops, we divert blood flow away from the muscles and it goes to our gut and it goes to our brain and basically, it's the beginning of aging. So when there's not as much blood flow going to your muscles, your muscles hurt. They don't grow when you work them out. They hurt after you work them out. And you have a negative reinforcement to exercise. So the muscles stop burning calories, too. So testosterone stimulates the, the burning of calories by your muscles. And your muscles all over your body are the, are the areas where you burn the most calories. So it the best idea is to get the most muscle and the least fat for you to be really healthy and burn calories and being able to eat normally. So that's why we give testosterone. We also try to limit the bad estrogen in both men and women. The bad estrogen is called estrone. And estrone is um, a hormone that comes from the adrenal gland and is also made in fat. And once you have some belly fat, and you've kind of, you know, you've let the horse out, out and it's running free, you then make more estrone, then you make more belly fat, then you make more estrone, and it's a vicious cycle and you just keep getting fatter. So the idea is to, to not get belly fat at all and try to prevent it with testosterone, but we also use medication in our pellets that decreases estrone. We also use some other supplements such as DIM to decrease our estrone. I'll go over that a little bit in a little bit. The third problem that people think they have belly fat but may not have belly fat, they may have abdominal distension. So if you think of your, think of your belly as kind of a, a bucket, but it's a closed bucket, and it has all these in, uh, intestines, miles of intent, intestines inside of that, and they're usually really flat unless food's moving along, um, inside your intestines are good bacteria and bad bacteria. The good bacteria help break down your food and give you your nutrients. The bad bacteria make gas, make you feel bloated, make those little flat intestines all swell up. So if miles of intestines swell up and fill up with air and gas, then you get distension. That can happen for lots of reasons. It may happen because you have an intolerance to gluten, and gluten's in so many things. And until you stop eating gluten, then you will have this distension. Oftentimes, your bowels don't move because you have hypothyroidism. Your thyroid has to be at normal levels or optimal levels for your bowels to move along. I treat constipation and distension often with just treating the low thyroid that the patient has. They... Luckily, it, it deflates their belly, and then they can see what really is fat and what really isn't. Then there are some people who don't eat enough fiber. So if they don't eat enough fiber, they just fill up with poop. That's the only way to say it. And if you have a lot of poop in your intestines and it's not moving out, then you get distended. And distension hurts. Um, if you're allergic to milk or other uh, foods, you need to have your food allergies done. Now there's tests you can do at home to see what you're allergic to for foods. If you're allergic to food, you shouldn't eat that food because that is going to cause you to be distended. And last but not least, many of us don't have the right bacteria in our intestines. We need to all, I mean everybody, take probiotics 
And at the beginning of our probiotic treatment, we should take prebiotics as uh, Dr. Sullivan so nicely calls it, the prebiotics are like making a nest for the good bacteria to grow. So you need a, a month of that and then probiotics forever, basically, because we, <laughs> we live in a really clean society. We don't get a lot of the good bacteria from dirt or other things that we used to work in the soil and do things like that. And we used to have a not a sterile kind of household. So we used to get our bacteria from our life, but now we don't. So we need to give ourselves the right bacteria that will deflate your belly. So these three things are considered abdominal fat or bloating. As we age, we slow our metabolism, which slows our bowel function, which slows, and part of that has to do with uh, lowering the amount of, of calories that we burn. So we gain fat. We can't eat the same things that we ate when we were 30, when we're 50, and still maintain uh, our body. I have patients every day come in, well, when I was 30, I just, I just didn't eat for two days and it all went away. Well, your metabolism was different then. You can't really compare 30 to 50. You have to look at what you are now and your metabolism has slowed. I try to speed metabolism up for my patients. Testosterone does that, giving them back their estradiol does something different, it actually decreases their insulin resistance. So insulin resistance, we've discussed before, but insulin resistance basically is the inability to use the food and the sugar that you make out of the food and put it into your cells. It actually, you're, you get resistant to it. So the insulin can't get into your cells and carry the sugar through to burn calories. So it bounces off and it makes fat. And that's as simply simple as I can make insulin resistance. And it happens at menopause in almost every woman. Therefore, almost every woman should stop eating carbs, which makes this whole, whole problem worse when they are in menopause. They have to stop drinking alcohol so much because what we mix alcohol with is all sugary. And that's making this whole thing worse. Alcohol also prevents you from burning calories not just for that day or that hour, but maybe for two or three days following. So I advise my patients when they're trying to lose their belly fat to not drink alcohol, only add it back when they get to their ideal weight because it's really putting a roadblock in our progress. When we look at somebody's belly fat, we actually do a body composition with um, a brand of body composition machine called InBody. And it's very helpful it tells me how much fat they have under their skin, subcutaneous, under their skin all over, how much their fat is under their skin in their belly, how much fat is actually inside. I can measure the omental fat with this machine. And there are different answers to those different kinds of fat. I mean, for, for under the skin fat, you have to actually lose, just lose weight. I mean, it is something that you can do if you have the right hormones, if your thyroid's normal, your testosterone's normal, your estrogen's replaced, you can actually lose weight and that will decrease the fat in your abdomen. You also, for the other kind of fat that's in your omentum, that's harder. That is decreasing carbs, but it's also daily aerobic exercise. Walking quickly for an hour, getting on a treadmill for an hour, you can run for less for 45 minutes or jog for 45 minutes, yog. Anyway, um, only you old people will get that. And um, <laughs> so you have to become very active. That speeds up your muscle burning of calories. So if you can think of it that way, that's going to speed up the muscle burning calories. It's also going to speed up the use of the fat that's in your ab inside your abdomen. Um, so let me go over the risks or the triggers that cause belly fat. So menopause is the first one. Low testosterone and estrogen, excuse me, low testosterone in men and women, and that starts at about age 40 for women, and now I'm seeing it starting at age 40 for men as well. Um, aging just naturally causes an increase in estrone from your adrenal gland, and so that has to be countered with something. We use DIM or we use the drug Arimidex to decrease the estrone, which will then decrease your fat in your belly. Inactivity. Most of us sit all day. 
I mean, when I was an OB, I was running around all day, and it was really easy to not eat. But when we're sitting, we get used to using food as a companion. So you have to think about that and not use your food as something that makes you feel better about sitting there doing your work. You have to do something else. I mean, and after dinner, you have to do something with your hands. I don't care if you knit or you needlepoint or you do your nails. You have to do something with your hands that precludes eating so that you don't eat. It's, it's a change in your behavior. Um, but inactivity is a biggie. Women who have had multiple pregnancies have tons of skin that just won't go back, especially if their pregnancies were after the age of 25. Before 25, skin seems to just snap right back. But multiple pregnancies after 25, which is most of the world, most of the U.S. now, um, leaves you with extra skin. And so that may or may not have fat under it. If you can just, if it's thin and you can just pull it out, that's just extra skin. That might have to be tightened or removed for you to actually get your belly back. Um, a poor diet, we'll talk about that uh, next week, but a poor diet, high in carbs, low in nutrition, that increases your, um, your uh, chance of having belly fat. And then lack of abdominal wall exercises. We're going to go over that um, next week, and I'm going to show you different abdominal wall exercises you can do at home without weights, without anything, without a trainer. So we'll go over that next time. The way you can look at assessing yourself is if you had access to an in-body machine, it would be nice to know where your fat is so that, that you know how much is inside, how much is outside of your belly. But you should start by measuring with a measuring tape right at your belly button how big you are. And that's called your girth. And then as you make progress with your changing of foods, medications, and exercise, you, you can watch it go down. That's the best way. Weighing yourself is not necessarily the best way because you might make more muscle in your belly. In fact, when I work out and do my ab workouts, the day that I do that, my muscles actually swell in my abdomen and my waistline gets bigger for a day, but then it backs up to not just what I was the day before, but lower than the day before when I re- test the following day. So sometimes muscles do swell right after exercise, and that's, that's, the tr that's the same thing for abdominal muscles. But they will come back, and you will get them tighter and thinner by using the exercises that we'll uh, show you next week. Um, so high-carb foods, we talked about that. Lack of daily targeted abdominal exercises, lack of aerobic exercise, poor posture. So I'm sitting a little reclined, but my shoulders are back. Anytime your shoulders are like this, that's poor posture. You're making your muscles in your abdomen relax and fold up. And so they're not strong and tight. So when you're standing, you should have your shoulders back. When you're sitting, you should sit comfortably, but not slouched. And when you're at your computer, you should sit up more on the edge of your chair. Um, obviously, overeating is not good. Constipation, irritable bowel, getting to the bottom of what is causing bloating, checking your thyroid, all of those, and treating it. All of those things are important and taking your probiotics. Um, smoking actually breaks down your collagen, so it gives you more fat and less tightness to your abdominal muscles. Um, alcohol and alcoholism gives you liver disease and distension. Fatty liver also uh, can cause belly fat. And then um, eating junk food, food that doesn't have nutrition in it, that's just a waste. So you need to eat real food, real food that comes from the grocery store. Now, factors that you can go to your doctor to have treat treated. Your low testosterone can be replaced. Pellets are the safest and the most effective way uh, to have, but for both men and women. If your thyroid is low, then you should have your thyroid replaced. I like Armour Thyroid for women and um, Levothyroxine for men. If you have high cortisol, there's ways to treat that, but that's a high stress level, and that gives you belly fat and back fat and just basically fat everywhere. So Decreasing your stress, learning how to handle stress is always a good idea. Um, growth hormone goes down when your testosterone goes down, so that means you have less muscle and it's hard to make muscle and 
more fat. So that's one thing that you can stimulate with testosterone. But some people need help. If they have prediabetes or diabetes, it's really hard to lose belly fat because of your insulin resistance. So we treat that with metformin extended release or Victoza or Trulicity. And the new drug, Ozempic, is excellent. It's a one shot a week kind of thing that you can give to yourself. And it works very well at improving insulin resistance, making you more sensitive, and so you can lose weight. It's not a frustrating process. Um, elevated triglycerides should be taken care of with either metformin or other drugs that are specific for triglycerides because that blocks your weight loss. Increase your protein intake. Vitamin D and B are all very important for weight loss. I put all my patients on that and probiotics. There are some things that are going to make your journey harder if you have different kinds of genetics than some other people. So you can't look at your friend who's I have, I have a beautiful friend who's always the perfect weight, runs miles and marathons, and she's, yes, she's over 55, and she is a completely different metabolism type. She did need testosterone, but she's never gotten belly fat. I can't compare myself to her. I can't live the same life she does, and you shouldn't either. This is not a group project. This is just you and your body, and how are you going to manage your body to make it healthy and get rid of the belly fat? So if you, were, if you had obesity as a child, the studies now show it's much harder for you to lose weight. If you have an endomorph belly, uh, body type, like you're smaller at the top, we call it the pear, and larger at the bottom or the belly, or an apple belly type or body type where you're really, you've always been big in the center, that's really hard to lose. I mean, you can make it you can make your waist smaller with doing the things that we discussed, but it makes it harder for you. So I just want you to know that so you're not frustrated as frustrated or more frustrated that this is something that makes it more difficult. You'll just have to do more of the things and try harder and stick to your diet. A family history of obesity is one that is common. And, and that goes along with family history of uh, pre-diabetes or diabetes. That makes it a lot harder, and, but metformin works really well for you guys. Um, there are actually genetics that tell us that some people just are never full. They can eat and eat and eat and eat, but their brain does never say, oh, you're full. So those folks require lots of different types of treatments to help them psychologically learn to stop eating even when they're not full. And I think the hardest one is some people genetically are always hungry, and that's a different thing. So the feeling of being hungry, even after you've eaten, that's different than not being full. So I, I think I felt like that when I was pregnant, and it was an awful feeling, like never having enough food to feed me and my baby. That's how they feel all the time. And that requires psychological help, metabolic help, different types of drugs to actually help you not be hungry, appetite suppressants as well. Um, if you aren't sleeping very well, it's very hard to lose weight. It's very hard to lose belly fat. And so I'll say the most you can, the best, better sleep you get, the more weight you're going to lose. So melatonin is a weight loss kind of hormone. So we want to sleep in a dark room. We want to sleep seven to eight hours. So all of these things, believe it or not, come into belly fat, which you thought was probably just a, a, a one, uh, one, oh, do this and it's over. Don't believe any of those ads because it isn't, because it'll come right back. If, even if they're effective, most of the time they're not. So I hope you learned something. I hope you give yourself some sympathy if you have some of the problems that I discussed at the end or if you have prediabetes already. But that doesn't keep you from going for it and getting rid of your belly fat. And I think the first step in the foundation is to replace your hormones if you're at that age. And if you're not, then start with metformin and exercise and diet and, and supplementation. Please join us next week for the other parts of belly fat, which have to do with diet and exercise. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com 
or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.